Good morning, morning, morning. Welcome here to another Kerfuffle webinar. Here today with the king of hair. There he is, Mr. Jerry Lyons, Agency Content Club, as he described himself, Chief Dossa. So, Chief Dossa, welcome to the welcome to the forum. How are you, sir? I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. I hope you're going to get your energy levels up because that's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have Nick Cheshire and Abigail joining us today, who are bringing together the sensible, uh, the sensible side of the business. Uh, welcome, guys! Oh no, don't don't raise your eyebrows there, Abigail. I noticed that. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Are you both well? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, really good. Excellent. We have got a mystery star who may or may not uh, appear. He didn't get the <laughs> ten o'clock memo, but. Uh, if he jumps on, we'll just we'll we'll all welcome him. Well, so Adam, if you're out there, you're meant to be on here. Jump on now. Uh, we're going to talk today, guys, about how great estate agency content wins instructions. Which, if that doesn't catch most people's attentions uh, at the moment, then I don't know what will. But I suppose, uh, Jerry, that's the sign of a good headline, isn't it? Really, uh, it's, all, it's all about the, it's all about the headline. Ninety nine percent of any piece of content or article is the headline because if the reader doesn't get attracted by the headline they won't read the rest of it yeah so can i just kick off just with one brief observation the fantastic louisa fletcher a, a journalist she was making the point that the british public reads at an is it an 11 year old level or something like that is that is that something that you would have heard or uh, or in your previous life that that that's yeah. why the importance of a simple headline is so important well i know from something we did years ago when we were studying the Sun could be read by a nine-year-old, the Sun newspaper. Yeah. And they did a really interesting thing where they took a reporters from the Telegraph, who can write 600-word articles as standard, and the Sun, who could only were allowed 250, 350-word articles, to swap jobs. And the yeah. Sun writers could do what the Telegraph writers could do easily because they've got all these extra words to use. Yeah. The Telegraph writers couldn't do the Sun version. So... As somebody who has been accused, this is me, by the way, of being, of being overly verbose, I've sat there at the end you? of what I have thought is the most fantastic blog or article, literally cheered myself at using all these kind of Blackadder-style uh, things and then got literally zero engagement rate. It's a real issue, isn't it, in terms of not dumbing down, but uh, but... Making making something simple is is harder than it looks. I suppose would be the would be the thing there. Abigail, Nick, how have you how have you found the process of communicating just to the the public? There does it come very naturally to you as agents, or is this something that you've had to learn over time? Uh, I think Nick. from from my side, um, it's something that we've kind of learned over time. But equally, I think us putting it into text is not so easy. Estate agents are known for waffling. And I think waffling in a blog post, it's not quite, it just doesn't come across well. It's too long. It can be quite boring. So kind of getting that art of keeping it short, sweet, um, sometimes humorous, but getting the message across in, in love, what Jerry said, like less words, I think is something that I've particularly always found difficult. Um, and to get that message across, particularly on social media, where people's attention span is so short, yeah, it's, it, it has been quite difficult to try and hit that niche, I think. I was going to respond with, sorry, what did you say there? But that was just making a joke on the lack of uh, attention to detail. But uh, I didn't want to go down there. <laughs> Stick to the day <laughs> <jokes>. <laughs> yeah. Abigail, what about yourself? Is this something, is this an area? First of all, do you enjoy, do you enjoy this whole area? Or is it something you've strugg ever struggled with? Um, I think it's probably the, one of the things that got me reinvigorated about a state agency a few years ago, looking at what what we're doing. And I think changing my whole attitude to what we're doing. I think previously I would have thought we're just a service industry. Now we are a service industry, probably primarily, um, but almost in equal measure, we're now a marketing agency. And that's something that's taken a little while to grasp that concept. And I think there are still quite a few agents out there that don't don't realise we have to be like a, a sort of omni-channel marketing machine. Mm. And content's really the like the linchpin of all of that. And I think it also depends on your own background. Like I, I come from quite an academic background and writing for me is is not a problem, but writing 
documents and, and content or even um, uh, details, mm -hmm. you're like, what, what's actually important? Because it needs to be punching. Like I'm used to writing dissertations and stuff like that. And people mm -hmm. don't want long, like you said, long sort of verbose paragraphs that go on forever about mm -hmm. with infinite detail. They want to know why they want to see this or why they should be reading it. And what are the sort of key points that they can take away? And I think that's one of the amazing things that Jerry does um, is present this information in, a, in short, sharp, punchy way. And people don't get bored reading it or fall asleep or just think, I don't have time to read that. I'm going to look mm. at it later. You, no one could ever be accused of falling asleep to one of Jerry's posts. That's Never. That, that's just not possible. <laughs> Gary, as as usual, um, I've completely missed the point, um, which is most people Sound like you. Um, do you want to just for those people who have lived under a, a living under a rock or everything else, just give them context to what the agency content club does for your does for your members, and and indeed why you felt that there was a need for it. Um, it's really simple. We provide written articles. Well, we started off providing just written articles for estate agents, purely because. A couple of my friends who run agency a few years back um, said they didn't have the time to write these articles. Mm. They, they didn't have the time or the will or the skill. It does take a bit of skill to write an article, believe it or not. Um, so we just thought we launched the club properly two years ago. September, this September is our second birthday. Um, and it was just the gap we saw in the market for, for writing content for estate agents. And it's grown from there to be videos now we provide videos as well um and also more and more and i think this is going to be one of the big areas of content is a lot of our members i, I don't think nick or abigail do but i think it's something to consider is they use the content almost like as a script for to camera type stuff so let's yeah. say we've done a piece about i don't know um a change in landlords reg, uh, legislation we'll do an article but i've noticed more and more of our members are using that article to talk directly to camera Using one of those, uh, not biddy printers. What are they called? Teleprompter. Teleprompter. What's a biddy printer? <laughs> I just made that up. Is that just a word? They got around to put the instrument of sport on, wasn't it? That was. Oh, that's was... it. Yeah, yeah. The biddy printer. Stay yeah. on message. Stay message and, re and relevant here, Jerry. Come on. <laughs> it's just listen. Nobody minds a ramble as long as it's an entertaining ramble. Yeah, that's that's the key. I tell you what, you it's bad. It's it's really bad when you've got Andy Overman uh, helping you out. <laughs> <laughs> um okay jerry let's let's, let's, yeah. let's say this. so did you did, i mean can you admit now did you used to get infuriated at, at what you saw agents were doing or uh or did you just go i can i can do good here um didn't i wouldn't say get infuriated one thing that does infuriate me is jargon and pretension Oh, and shit, that's the wrong show. <laughs> no, but, that, but, that, but that's the cornerstone of if you can remove the jargon from any communication, yes. you can communicate better. So, Do you know what just, I mean? on, just on that, Jerry, uh, I, I remember reading the uh, Elon Musk uh, autobiography, and nutcase though he is, the thing that I loved about him when he when he uh, did Tesla, he stopped them using an, an acronyms or whatever it is because he said it was a it was just a way of hiding behind almost you know proving you were cleverer than other people, and the amount of lost time that was you know either people didn't want to put their hands up and admit they didn't know. Or they, uh, or they, or, or you know, or, or they, or they got embarrassed by doing it, which doesn't help a great culture all around, does it? Or when, when, when the key word is communication, it stops exactly. the whole thing working. Exactly, and, and I would say with these two guys, Abigail and Nick, not just saying it because they're they're here. He is saying it because we're here. Yeah, I am That's saying it. that because they're here. No, Famous. but they're very, they're very real people. Yeah, and that's one thing I think where estate agents have got a lot better at. They don't have to do these silly photos. Of them looking all slick and professional, like under like that or on the phone. Why would anyone have a profile photo, right? Everybody now, it makes no sense. Look, everybody look, now, go to, go to Ian Mental. White's, go to Ian White's profile on LinkedIn and do. If he, he used to have it like that, it was, I, I still. I mean, I that, that, but of course, don't go to mine because that was photoshopped about six years ago. So. Yours, I, yours I mean, is incredible. It is. I've, got Jeremy, is yeah. I've got Jeremy Beadle's hand underneath. It's it like button. yours is like a pantomime performance. <laughs> <It's, laughs> like, Thank you. Like Look, um, because I because I'm also a technical uh, uh, technical support act as well. Adam, who is our mystery guest, he says, "Chap, so 
sorry, my link did not work. Not sure what happened. Adam, I don't know if you still can. Just try it on Chrome or, or I think on Explorer. It doesn't work on Safari, but do see if that works. If not, we'll 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 carry on manfully without without you. But thanks for letting us know. Uh, somebody liked the fact that I used the word overly verbose, but um, there, there you go. Uh, Andy Overman jumped in there just before his, his teleprompter assistance there to say, we are all marketeers nowadays. Yeah. Um, I think that is true, isn't it? Or certainly we need, to, we need to at least identify that that is a skill you have in your business, whether that is internal or whether it's outsourced. It's not something you can't, you can do without, is it? Because yeah. otherwise the famous Seth Godin and being the purple cow, you are going to get lost in all of the noise and everything else that's out it's, there. It's interesting you said it because Nick... You know your cell boards? Yeah, yeah. For me, that is a great piece of marketing. Do you want to explain about your, how your set for sale and sold boards look? So we, we've got um, – we had just that kind of standard for sale boards originally, which just had your kind of traditional for sale and sold on it. But because we kind of deal one-to-one -one with the clients here, um, I just kind of felt that the individual needed a little bit more recognition for the fact that they'd been the one that sold that property – so all we did is we kept the boards exactly the same and we took the sold slip and we put sold by and then it would have like Nick Cheshire and it had my mobile number underneath it with, with our picture to the side. And we just found it was a little bit, I don't know, it's like a pat on the back for yourself a little bit yeah. because you've sold it and you've got your name there. Yeah. So it helps with a bit of morale. But I think for other people actually seeing that there's, there's an individual that sold that property. It's not the company, it's that person that sold that property. Yeah. I think it just goes a long way in adding that whole we're, we're people, not a company. I think that is that's a massive one, Nick, isn't it? That, that we've learned that we've had to learn to break out from over here, from the Americans and the Aussies have done very well in terms of blending much better the the company brand and the individual brand together without seeing them as happen so often over here as actually being in conflict. I think that. But for so long that happened where the, the company didn't want to promote the individual. And as we've noticed, you're, you're missing out on, on, on the one of the, you, you, you can't say on the one hand, your greatest asset are your people and then, yeah. and then not promote your people, can you? Well, the, the, that's the interesting thing. So Bailey here, her mum, uh, so she's American. Her mum is a real estate agent in America uh, for Keller Williams. Okay. And she came over to visit her daughter and she introduced us both and we had a bit of a chat. And she just found it completely bizarre how she saw all these for sale balls around and all these sold balls, but none of them mentioned the agent that had sold it or the agent that had listed it. It mentions the agency, but none, none of them mentioned the individual. And that's where the kind of thought process started going on. And then she mentioned about having our face on there and it just kind of developed from there to end up what it is now. But I think it's just the, the end result is, is better because people are seeing particularly if you're a client of that individual and you're seeing that they've sold that property or they've got another property for sale, it's, it's a bit reassuring for the client. But I think for the general public to kind of see the people involved with the business, it, I think that kind of personal recon, recognition is, is important. And it's helped, but it has helped the morale side of things because it does make you feel better when you see your face on the board, um, particularly when the kids see it as well. So um, I think there's so many different elements that are benefiting from uh, that are benefit to putting your face on these things and getting your face out there a little bit more. And I don't quite understand. I fell in the habit. I don't understand how us as agents seem to be shying from that. Well, for another man who's, who's never shied from it, but probably should have, Andy Overman, uh, <laughs> Jerry's video content is going down a storm now. Uh, and he's also saying as well, also editable Canva images so they can do some green screen videos. I'll tell you what was interesting. When I used to do, way before Chris Watkins said he was, he was, he was doing it, we used to, I used to interview our, our old repeat clients. And every time I went, I was just about to go on camera. They would go, oh, God, I hate going on camera. It's absolutely, you know, oh, I get so nervous. And the minute the cameras went on, it was like showtime like that. Agents, by definition, are gregarious people. They are, they are, you know, you'll never see a quiet person. And, you know, an estate agent is never the quiet one at a party, is it? It, just, it may take a little bit of getting beyond that comfort zone there. But once you are able to, to get that, that personality out there, uh, to quote uh, to quote uh, Arthur Daly, the world's your lobster, isn't it? I mean, it really does open up that ability to promote yourself with all the very easy ways that you've got these days on every every platform going. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we we, we can all be 
mini Rupert Murdoch's now, given the amount of media platforms we have just with that in our hand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's mental. It's, it's mental. It There's is. so many ways to get out, get your message out to the market. So, so Jerry, let me kick off with, uh, with, the, with the main one there. Does so, what does great estate agency content look like to you? And then I'll come, I'll come to you, Abigail and Nick afterwards. But Jerry, from your point of view, what does it? What does? Who's doing great estate agency content apart from your good self and the people here? Um, who speaks to mind? Andy Overman, not just saying it because he's, he's, I'm really not just saying it because no, I paid, his own it. Right, he? I, 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 paid I, him £100 pound to comment on this thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Andy Overman springs to mind, um, Luke Sinclair, Oliver Press. Um, there's loads of agents doing it. Yeah. But the theme is, the, I think the theme is the common thing with the guys that are doing it is, and Abigail's done this really well recently as well, is they've got involved with their community. Yeah. So you know, like the stuff you did, Abigail, when your chap, I forget his name, but he was around Wembley Stadium. Hassan, during the yeah. Was it Hassan? Yeah, it's Hassan, our biggest yes. football fan. Yeah, but that was really good because that was interesting. Do you know what I mean? And that was community based content. It's got nothing, it's got sod all to do with property, but it's everything to do with capturing people's attention. And I think one of the things every business has got to get their heads around, whether they're estate agents or butchers, right, is we're in the attention business now. Everyone is competing for attention. So yeah. whether you grab that attention by a community article or an article about um, one we've got lined up, which always worked well in this month, is getting kids ready to go back to school. Nothing to do with property, but it always gets a good um, feedback and a good um, share rate, whatever you want to call it, on social media. So good content. And I'm going to use – Elon Musk is going to love this because I'm going to use one of those acronyms purely because if i didn't i would forget what i was talking about because i'd go off and talk about something else is hits so think of hits right for your content is it helpful helpful being is it helpful to the reader to the watcher is it interesting interesting could be a lot of different things but you've just got to try and make it interesting in terms of the tone of it the subject matter is it trustworthy is somebody going to read or watch it and think i can trust these guys and the final one is is it sustainable because one of the Big issues, well, not issues, it ain't an issue. Pro problems I see with estate agents, when they start their content, unless they use a us or Chris Watkin or Data Loft, they can start on their own really well, but they can't sustain it. Mm. So the S is for sustainable. So it's helpful, interesting, trustworthy, sustainable. Yeah. Because you see loads available. of people, don't you, that have a, uh, you know, a massive blitz on, on, in some marketing campaign and then. You just don't see him for months again afterwards, do you? And, and and I've been guilty of that. I think like many people, I was talking to Jane yesterday, great social on the social media side as well. Do you remember the first time you ever got uh, got to do your, your first newsletter? Forty articles, <laughs> couldn't get it. Next edition went down to twenty. By the third month, you were down to ten, and by the by by the fourth, you were asking around the office, Christ, guys, what have we got to put in here? It, it really does take commitment, doesn't it, to understand if you're going to enter into this, you can't, you can't do it piecemeal. Just as people say, advertising, you know, has to be about uh, that consistency. It's, it's, it's best, best line, I think, for that is um, content marketing is not an event. It's a process. It's not something you go, bang, we've done it now, tick the box. It's yeah. something that you sort of like tick the box every day on or every, at least every week, at least every week. But on, on that point, let me just come to you first, Abigail. That that obviously you can't disagree with anything that Jerry's just said there. But what you know, I can I can still see a few people rolling their eyes and sort of, well, that's all very well. But you know, have you seen how short we are of instructions out there? And you know, if you've got the opportunity to try and turn up to you know to turn up to an appraisal, how important do you think it is to keep that as almost uh, you know to defend that time to make sure that you are you know, you are dedicating it to this content creation. Well, I think it's really important because the only way you're going to get more listings is by continuously nurturing your client base and getting useful information out to them. I mean, we've had people that we haven't spoken to for a while call us up, say, oh, I saw your article the other day. Um, do you remember me? I bought a house from you 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and just start a conversation from there. And then the next minute, you know, you're showing them a house and they've bought something and they want you to sell theirs. And it's an ongoing process. And I think part of the problem with estate agents is we want everything now. And playing the long game 
again, it is something that none of us have ever been used to. But you've got to play a long game and you've got to plan it. It's like any single thing that you do, you have to consistently do it. So you need to consistently put out content. You need to consistently prospect. You can't just do it one day and then not and then not do it the next. And also, once you start doing it consistently, if you don't send something out, people start to miss it. I had a client phone up and say, oh, I didn't get your normal Friday article. Did I miss something? I'm like, okay, I forgot to press send there. Whoops. Um, and send it out. So you do want people to be continuously left in a, in a situation where they're wanting more. And I think working with people like Jerry and Chris, he, it, it sort of taught us that we need to plan our content as well. So stuff that Jerry does, we have our weekly plan now, just like he does. We, we've taken that and then we add all the other bits and pieces that we're going to do to it. And I think even if you're outsourcing a lot of that content creation, you still need to have somebody in the business whose main task is putting that all together and overseeing it and dealing with the engagement and sharing it out and, and making sure any any feet leads that come back in from it are being dealt with properly. So it, it's so important. I, I don't think... And, and Abigail there, you just mentioned there, somebody should be responsible. But that doesn't mean that it should all fall on them, does it? That just no. means that they no. should be able to go out and say, talk to other members of the team. Have you got some ideas and, and pick up on... on yeah, that, know, that's what we do. So we've got one person in our business that collates everything. Yeah. And she will say to the team, OK, this is Monday. Here's my plan for the week. I need a sales video today. I need a lettings video tomorrow. I need an applicant wrap. I need a coming soon sneak peek video and she'll tell them what she needs for that week so they've got time to go and put it together. Got you. Okay, that's really helpful. And Nick, from your point of view, you know, what does great estate agency content look like to you? Not boring, for starters. Not not boring. and not. I know we've said it already, but the estate agency lingo, talking in our own kind of language so the yeah. clients can't understand that. I know Jerry made a point of that, but I think it's so important because as soon as they see anything that is – that jargon base, they switch off and they, they forget the content. So I think it's got to be interesting. Um, I've always found humour tends to work a million times better than anything boring. Does um, it? Does it? <laughs> um, so, Go on, Mr. Tumble. <laughs> <laughs> so humour humor definitely is, is uh, a, a main point there, but also the consistency. Yeah. But Nick, just on that humour, obviously I'm going to jump into that one there. Cause yeah. was made. That's a really difficult. It, it can be so powerful, yeah. can't you? But you can you can quite easily step over the line. How important is it to take that gamble to be a bit edgier? Do you do you just have to feel that naturally within your comfort zone, or what? I mean, clearly you feel comfortable with, with that element, but some people I think would naturally, you know, pull away from that, don't they? Yeah, I think people are too worried about upsetting everyone. And there is all, it doesn't matter what you say, even whether it's humorous or not, you're going to upset someone somewhere. But I think there's a level where you can kind of go, yeah, that's a bit too close to the line, where if you wouldn't say it to your nan, don't put it on social media. So I think that's kind of my line. If, if I wouldn't joke with it with my nan, like whether she finds it funny or not, if I wouldn't say it to her, it's not going out there. I love, and I love the day. I love the idea that our thought learning today is what would my nan say? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Can I just make a point there? I had an old East End Cockney council house man yes. <laughs> who used to call us the C word. They rank. <laughs> So no shrinking violence there. So, yeah, using that test, she would laugh at anything. We used to fall off the bike. She'd be saying, ah, look at that idiot. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, the test doesn't work if it's so, a I think the rule is Nick's nan, not Jerry's nan. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Choose your nan. Not, not, not the Catherine Tate nan, basically. That's yeah, that's yeah. pretty much <laughs> like, that, that was my English nan, yeah. But can I, can I just say something? Sorry, sorry. You just made me think of something. Abigail, do you remember when you released the bloopers? Uh, yes, yeah. I had to cut out a lot of the expletives. <laughs> yeah, but that was it. I noticed that you got a really good response from that, it seemed, you know, like on, on social media, because people like that. It's, sort of thing. It's, it's, it's all about honesty, isn't it? It's about, exactly. it's about honesty and vulnerability. You are not you are not being pompous, are you? The minute you can that, do right. that. There's, there's a reason why some of the top and smartest brands now will film their stuff, not in a big expensive studio, mm. but with a, what's, what's one of those lights? I don't, don't know the technical term. But it's basically a camera, um, one of those bright lights that shine on your face and make you look like you've got a torch in your face. They'll do it that because it's got that, they'll film it that way because it's got that authenticity. 
Mm. And that's what people want, especially from estate agents, right? Because you're going up against the perception. Now, the perception is changing, but it's dodgy estate agents. I think, so, what, I think the thing I love about humour is it's, it leaves the independence uh, to, to be so much more nimble. There are some bigger brands that do humour fantastically well. Marsh and Parsons, I, 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 I just adore, and they get quite a lot of grief sometimes for some of their stuff. But me, resonates time in, time out. Uh, and everything else there. A lot of the other bigger brands, though, have just, they will just, I mean, they didn't, if you remember in the early days, they didn't even get involved in social because they were so petrified of what would, uh, would, what, hap what would, what would happen there. So look, there, there will, a lot of those ones are mellowing, as you'd say there, but you guys will always have the ability to be, first of all, you, you've always spoke about it, Jerry, the ability to respond quicker. You know, whilst they go through various sign-off procedures and everything else, you've already got the blog out there and have engaged as a as forward thinking. And then by again, you don't have to ask what sort of personality you know the the business is about. What should what voice should we be talking about? Because it is your voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and that applies to the community. You know, you're look in a good, smart, independent like these two and other guys are always more nimble in responding to the community's need yeah. than a corporate that has to sign it off through a CSR policy and make sure their PR team are happy with it and all that nonsense. You know, yeah. there's some of the stuff you've done, Abigail, with the Brent Balls and what's that project you've supported recently? Uh, and and so you project. And so you project all this stuff again. It's great content. It's like Nick. You know, when we did the thing with the um, the shop round your way. Yeah, the fab shop, the it's fab a charity run by special needs. Yeah, yeah. That's great content to for an estate agent to show that they're supporting their community. A, it's the right thing to do. And yeah. B, it's just it just gives you a great piece of content to go out and share with the community. Can we just touch on that just, just before I jump onto it, actually? Ben uh, jumps in. Ben Seville, uh, yes, I think being relatable and just showing you a real person is key. I think that's absolutely... Awesome. Cheers to that, Ben. Um, you talk about community there, uh, Jerry. You talk about doing the right thing. Your absolutely fantastic karma club, which really should uh, kerfuffle should have nicked because he's got a K in it and everything has a K in I it. I can sell it to you. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah we'll, have, we'll have conversation. Now. Look, just talk, talk to people what the what the karma club is and then, again, what your belief is that – because I firmly believe it shouldn't be seen as being cynical. You can do absolutely the right thing – socially morally and it still be a good thing for the business can't uh, can't you is that, is yeah. that right yeah yeah it? so so basically what's your belief around the karma club and how did it start up right so the karma club is basically we take a fiver every month from our members not you know it comes out of our pocket not theirs but it's like we'll take a fiver out and we'll yeah. put it all in a big collective sort of pot and then at the end of the at the start of the month <clears throat> we go to the members and say have you got any community groups you want to support in your area so like as mentioned Ab abigail's done it with a couple of sporting ones around her area nick's done it with shops adam who would have been on this he did it with the hospice and we give away about 650 quid a month um but what the, what happens there is we match fund the estate agent's donation so if let's say abigail gives 150 quid we'll give 150 quid meaning the community group and we always say, go small. Don't yeah. give it to Macmillan Cancer Relief. They do great work, they but do. they're very well funded. Don't give it to the Dogs Trust. Give it to a local dog sanctuary. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So go, think local with your, your, your giving. And, and the Karma Club is just basically, I don't know. I've always thought the business can be used for, for more than just profit and loss. And I think as well, it attracts the right kind of customers to you. I think a lot of our members buy into that. You know, like they can see what we're trying to do with the Karma Club. It's just, just right, the right thing to do. Can I ask Abigail and Nick? So, so, so did that enter into your mind, mind uh, process at all when you were thinking about, um, you know, wanting to get involved with Jerry? Was was the Karma Club just a further, just a reinforcement that this was the right kind of business? Because you don't look. It's not possible, is it, to always like the people you do business with or partner up with, but. It's sure as hell lovely when it happens when it happens like that, isn't it? I'm going to disagree with you on that and say that I don't think I could do business with someone that I dislike because I find it very hard to be nice to people. And I'm and I'm I'm generally a nice person, but I find it very hard to be nice to somebody that I don't respect and I, I don't think, think is doing good stuff. I uh, I'm like the guy in the far show who changes his mind every two minutes. Abigail, so, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so what, no, the only thing I'd say is that does seem to me though that actually that is an, that is a very real trend, and I don't know whether it's down to lockdown and what's happened, but people have genuinely started uh, really questioning themselves on that, haven't they? And whereas maybe you know it was it was more true before that you would get by with actually you know that our views aren't aligned now, and, and I certainly see it with the youth of today. If you don't have the right credentials as a business, they simply aren't going to buy from you. Yeah. No. So I'm right and I'm wrong there, you know, Abigail. I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not important whether I'm entirely wrong or not. <laughs> I, 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 think it, I think it comes down to choice as well. It's the same thing. You know, like all things being equal, yeah. if one business, if one agency does a fair bit for the community and the other doesn't, all things being equal. So they're... You, you like the, the valuation is on point, the marketing looks good, and you're thinking, oh, I can't really decide which one which. Do you know what I mean? And you think, yeah, but the other one supports the local football club. I see them getting involved with the local fate. I see them doing the local book club. That could be the 1% that just makes wins the instruction. I'm not saying it definitely would, but it's going to help, isn't it? I mean, on that point, um, I was just going to say, we're, we're so reliant on the community for our business that we have a moral responsibility to give something back to it. And if all you're doing is taking, mm. you're never going to get any reciprocity, are you? No, 100%. That, absolutely spot on. And Nick, that, that aligned with what you, you're thinking as well, very very much so? Um, yeah, I mean, when, when I first spoke to Jerry, I first reached out to kind of find out a little bit about, uh, about kind of what he does. And I got on with Jerry quite well. I'm saying this because he's got my PayPal email address. So... Um, I got on with him quite well. We we seem to kind of align in a lot of things. And I think the Karma Club come in just after I joined. Yeah. It's one of the things that kind of, I initially only thought, I'm going to give this three months, I'm going to see how it goes, and then I'll decide what to do from there. But the Karma Club was just like another thing that kind of anchored me in for longer. Um, mm. And I'm glad it did, because as the longer it went on, three months wasn't enough. I know we've like content marketing, it's, a, it's the long game, it's not the short game. So three months wouldn't have been enough to kind of test it anyway properly. So it's a bit of naivety from my side, but that Karma Club thing just kind of made me realise I was with the right company um, and yeah. I wanted to be there longer. And that's kind of kept me now for, oh, it's well, well, it's about 18 months now, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, it's got to be about that. Lovely. That's great. Well, look, I did. it's a bit like Candyman. You mentioned his name three times and he turns up. Uh, Mr. Watkins, uh, the, the venerable, the venerable Mr. Watkins, uh, Abigail, spot on about giving back to the local community. And there's a man who obviously coined the term, you know, digital mayor and everything else. There, I, I love, uh, I just love that that process, that approach. There, I don't see a state anyone more than a state agents doing anything anymore for their local communities. I think it's a it's this, it's this uh, again, using shitty terms again here, Jerry, the juxtaposition of how mental it is. The, the, the public juxtaposition. Yeah, juxtaposition. no, 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 don't ask me to explain it. Don't worry, he's been overly verbose again. I have been overly verbose. That, you know, that the public see you in what agents in one way, in that classic lazy approach, and actually agents are out there doing, working with the local community, doing charity stuff with the local community, and I'm talking about here as well, of course, on, on the average ones, or, or sorry, rather than the, you know, rather than the streams, who obviously we always get attacked with. Um, he, I have to disagree. <laughs> disagree here as well. uh, Abigail, Jerry, he's the main man. Um, that must be because you gave him such a whipping in the ring, uh, Jerry. <laughs> Who's talking? I can hear another voice. It's like a cross line back in the day. Oh, sorry, Nick. <laughs> it's Nick. You know, like, remember back in the day, you you cross line when you pick up your landline. Do you remember that? Yeah. I, I, just, I, just, I just always hear the voices, so sorry I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. Uh, and Andy Overman, uh, engaged today, says, love that, Abigail, nailed on. It's our moral responsibility and duty. We listen and care for the needs of our community. So that's great. Can, can, can I just say that location and location are amazing at this yes, community they stuff. They are. Amazing. They are. That Yes, I mean, and, and actually it's, it's fantastic. And what I love about it is, is you know, what, are they are they two offices or three offices now with Andy Andy on board? Um, yeah, two two offices. People two offices. like them and and drivers and Norris and you, and the good people we've got on here today. 
the 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 actual noise in the in the best possible sense that you can make by doing the right stuff these days just vastly just dwarfs doesn't it what, what you know what what people this the more cynical marketing departments and pr departments in the corporates could hope to achieve and it shows there really is that payback on doing the right thing does deliver as well if you do it in the right way you know why because it creates emotion yeah it creates an emotion it can, it will make somebody feel something are normally positive. So when you do something for the community, most people will go, that's a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Like Location Location did this thing called Seeds of Kindness, okay. where they were giving out seeds uh, for people to do pot plants or not, not pot plants, like <laughs> games. <laughs> might, might have been. All good. Um, relaxing. Um, but they were doing the Seeds of Kindness campaign and then it extended. They were getting applications in from outside of their areas, yeah, from yeah. outside of their target market. And Vicky said, oh, that's fine. We'll send it to them. Right. Now that, if anything's going to generate good karma, that yeah. spirit of generosity, my God, surely that must be. Because there's no gain in it for them. No. It's just a loss. They're not going to win the business in Watford because they're based in North London and Fetford. No. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to move on to our next question now. But just before we do, Siri, make a note about seeds of kindness uh, along the lines of what Jerry suggested. That's the new. That's going to be the new kerfuffle. Uh, kerfuffle <laughs> promise here, right? It's all been positivity now, and you know I'm quite. Um, I'm, I get bo I get bored, distracted easily now. Let's look at this. Let's look look at some of the the underbelly of content and everything else. There, what what mistakes do you see out there, or 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 what should you avoid with your content? Any who wants to who wants to kick us off? I'd, yeah, have a go. Have a, right. have a go. Boring stuff. Boring. Boring is the boring is the enemy, basically. I also don't make it too long, and I'm guilty of this myself. So I made a video the other day, and I had to like chop it up because I made it, and it was like seven minutes long. I'm like, who's going to watch seven minutes of me? Only me. So um, I had to. Well, to I'll be careful. Okay. Really, drop some stuff in. But if you're anything like me, it's like you know that that you're, you're like asking them to cut the Godfather. He said, but that bit that was amazing. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like you. <laughs> the way you said that so forcefully, I am not like you. <laughs> shows, shows yet again why you're a person to be respected. Um, Abigail, how to, just in terms of that's such useful, but who, who is the arbiter on that? Do you run that? Do you have a, a group of friends or colleagues that you say, look, could you just watch this for me? Because so watching your own material is famously quite difficult to, to take yourself out of the zone. Yeah, I... I'm not too bad at it. I don't hate looking at myself on camera and I, I think I'm a fairly good judge, but I will run it past other colleagues. I might show it to my husband and if he's falling asleep after three minutes, I know it's a no-go. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Jerry, you were going to say something on this point as well. What's the mistakes to avoid? Um, mistakes to avoid. I think it's inconsistency, being inconsistent, having, uh, I always say the worst thing than having no blog on your site is having an old blog. Is if somebody goes onto your site and your top blog or your top article yes, is talking yeah. about the uh, the lockdown, the first lockdown, people are going to yeah. think, are they closed? Are they still in business? You know. So not, my last one, Jerry, it, uh, the last one I had to look at the other day was about GDPR. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's, it's it's also interesting what Abigail said about the length of videos. Because yeah. I, I've been thinking about this idea for a while, and it's just like we we time frame all our content. It's an old okay. journalistic. Well, it's not an old journalistic technique. It's quite a new one since the digital age. And we'll always say a one minute read, a two minute read, a three minute read. So I think that agents are better off doing things that are boxed in. So you know, like uh, here's here's our one minute uh, one minute run through. So you've only given sixty second videos. You know where you just go bang. So today yeah. we're going to tell you how to. Um, find a great conveyance in solicitor and just go look for their reviews look for recommendations blah 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 blah, blah. and there's use 60 seconds as the deadline it's like what we do with the the articles we'll always use i think the longest article we'll ever do is 500 words okay. and that'll be me going ah, ah, i yeah. want it short i want it short great advice yeah time frame everything Time frame, everything perfect. Nick, from your point of view, what do you? Oh, you've already said, obviously, you know. Again, reiterating, Abigail, don't be boring, don't be bland. Any anything else you see out there? Your competitors that you think keep doing that? 
I think the boring and bland we've kind of covered, the, the terminology we've mentioned before, my pet hate is the no obligation valuation line. I can't, I cannot stand that. I just, I think like when in our, the history of this industry has there been an obligation for evaluation, but like just the way that it's worded, it just falls into that, that same camp that the moment there's certain words like that are mentioned, yeah. that's it. People just put you in the same basket as everyone else. And every, you could have, just wrote a, a, an amazing blog. If he's got that at the end of it, you've lost them, I think. Um, you, you've just been putting that basket of everyone else straight away. It's like an old cliche, isn't it? Yeah. It's fascinating to know how many times that is repeated on. I might just do a spot checker on some agent's website. I think I'd be guilty of doing that because it rhymes. That's how simple my mind is. I like it because it rhymes. No obligation valuation. Just rhymes. But he's, you're, he's so right. The other thing as well, and I, I hope Chris Watkin doesn't hate me for saying this, I hate the term vendor. Vend, vendor applicant, uh, the idea that you apply for a property is one of the most hilarious. Yeah, but um, th think, think of vendor in normal everyday yeah. speak, yeah? The only vendor? time it's ever used is for hot dogs. I'll go to see the hot dog vendor. And then you wouldn't even say that. You'd say the geese are selling the hot dogs. Yeah. A vendor, applicant. We did this thing about jargon. We did like a mm. jargon busting thing and just had a bit of fun with it. And I think this is this is a key part of content for estate agents. You know, you said like what they're getting wrong is like what Nick's touched on there is the use of industry terms and jargon. It you might think you're sounding clever, but you're not, you're defeating the object of communication. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more, and the key part about it is to... Is yeah, but you'll change your mind about that, wouldn't you? You know, you couldn't yeah. agree more now, and then yeah. you change your mind. I must say, Premier Inn has got a, an learning. amazing backdrop. Are you going to Premier Inn? <laughs> yeah. I was just saying to the guys, as I checked in at the double tree, I didn't get one. I got two. Uh, <laughs> what's that saying about empathy? They empathise that I'm a, a chubby git. But anyway, OK, get on to the next one. Um, Jerry, why do you need a joined up approach to your agency's content marketing and what does that mean so joined up approach is basically just having the what well, a consistent tone of voice so if you're going to outsource your content to anyone yeah yep. just say like i want to see some samples first and then have a look at the content and say does this sound like something and have a word with your team does this sound like something we would say as an agency because our content is very much for independent local agents it wouldn't be for a corporate. It wouldn't yeah. be for a higher end market, a real higher end market. Just, just wouldn't be. We know that, uh, and it wouldn't be for the cheap and cheerful merchants either. So, think about the tone of voice for the content. Um, I forgot the question actually because my dog is barking. <laughs> Why you need a joined up approach? Just because it's better. <laughs> just because it's better. <laughs> no, because it's a joined up approach. Right by joined up, this is what we mean. So we offer, and this isn't a pitch, it's just a big part of our joint, joined up approach, is prospecting letters, e-guides, um, and the content club, the general content. Yeah. But the idea for that is it's almost like a complete content circle because that's yeah. most of your content there, yeah. e-guides. So an e-guide can be used as a lead uh, capture. Yeah. It gets them into your email nurture that we do as well that eventually keeps them on your database to send out um, the regular articles to. Does that make sense? Yeah? It absolutely does. And, and, and I think Abigail mentioned before as well, that kind of omni-channel approach, isn't it? It's big tick in the box there, obviously, because different people engage with you in different ways and indeed want to be engaged normally in the way that they've they found you as well, haven't they? Um, Nick, just on that approach there, you know, what does, what does having a joined-up approach mean to you? I think well, it's just consistency across the business and everything. Um, I think and everyone from the outside kind of looking in is going to see your tone on everything. What Jerry just said there about the articles, that was one of the things he did with me when I approached him is he gave me them articles to kind of read and see if it met us because I try and be as less estate agency as I can. Um, mm -hmm. Like the way I talk, the way I act, the way I dress, I try and break away from everything normal. So kind of making sure that it matches your tone is, is so important because I think for my concern outsourcing it was that it wouldn't come across how I would explain it. And when I tried to, I did look at outsourcing to other people who kind of do content, right? I just didn't find it. It was, it didn't hit the spot. It just didn't, it wasn't quite there. Um, so I think making sure that consistency with the content that you're putting out in all different medias kind of all match. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. 
And Abigail, you spoke before about that people having the person within your office, although they are, you know, they they will essentially create the the tone for the business as well. Um, yeah, although they, they collate. Obviously, we get a lot of the stuff from Jerry with the e guides and the canvassing letters and the lead magnets. So a lot of that is coming from the voice that he sort of helped us create. And I think one of one of the other added benefits, and this was the absolute cinch when I decided to sign up with Jerry, was he's from North West London. So everything is, <laughs> so he knows like the people, the demographic of my area better than mm. but most other people out there because he's lived in, in where we are. So mm. it, it really gives him an added advantage. And when, he, when we're writing something or we want him to create something, he knows the audience that it's going to be going out to. And he knows, like like Nick said earlier, with the humour, he knows yeah. what like the nan level is in this area. And it's you, high. That's, it's Nick. <laughs> that, you know, like it, I think the one big takeaway, because you'll probably ask that takeaway question. Best ever response I've ever heard to that takeaway question was at a conference. So and um, said, he won't. The, the Chinese, the, the Chinese I had the night before. That was the best. <laughs> the, Delivery the was um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds to me what we're talking about here, though, as much as anything is, as much as the process is, you know, uh, you, you need to empathise, don't you? If you're going to outsource it, you, it needs to, you need to feel that connection with, you know, the likes of Jerry there to make sure you're just on the on the same page. Once you are, that's quite an easy relationship to have then, isn't it? Because you're, you're going to dovetail together. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so... To help the impact and advertising tagline, can you provide one key statistic or something that might blow the minds of the audience, Jerry? You know, some, something that, that you haven't diverged before in terms of, you know, why this whole area is so important. Well, in content marketing? Yeah. What's, 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 what, what, why should people, you know, is there anything there that's out there that you feel should, should why, why people should be slapped around the face to, to obviously come to the, the wonder that is the agency content club? Not, not just agency content club, put that aside. Uh, content marketing in general. Um, I think all you need to do, if, you really, if you're not convinced about content marketing, take the time to read something by Seth Godin or, or Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Both very successful people. Godin's my favourite um, because he makes the point, right? So during the um, football that was recently on, it's probably the, the last time I watched terrestrial TV, um, a commercial ter terrestrial TV, we always made a point of skipping through the adverts. You know, like mm. we pause it, skip through yep. the advert, pause yep. it, skip through the advert. And basically that's what people are doing with a lot of advertising now. Now, content marketing isn't advertising. No. It's, think of it as telling rather than selling. So you're telling your audience how to do this or you're telling your audience why this community cafe is wonderful. Do you know what I mean? So... Go and seek out, if you're not convinced about content marketing, go and read something by Seth Godin. That would be my tip. That's cool, man. Okay. So let me turn that around a little bit then to Abigail and Nick then. In terms of, you know, what do you feel is the ROI from, from being a member of Jerry's Jerry's club? Are you able to... I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, sorry, just one sec. I'm just going to leave at this point. Genuinely leave. I'll come back in 30 seconds. As if my you dog, are. You've just, got, you've just gone to press the call. I, I think my dog's just bit the postman. <laughs> Okay, now uh, if if you could destroy him now, that would be the best video we could possibly do. But that would uh, <laughs> so so obviously there are a million and one different demands. Famously, I, I always quote, you know, agents on average have twenty different suppliers. So if you for you to invest your time, energy, and everything else with Jerry, and to be as you said, Nick, with him for eighteen months means that you really understand that they 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 deliver for you. Do you just do you just naturally feel that there's an ROI there? Or are you able to gauge and quantify that at all? Um, I, it's a mixture of both, really. I think the I'm confident that his content is going to win me business. There's no doubt in that. And for the first kind of six to nine months, I didn't really see that. I think I didn't really see that because I wasn't asking whether, whether they'd read these articles. I was going to valuations. I wasn't discussing it. And it got brought up a, a particular landlord that I met mentions when, when I asked, how did you hear about us? He mentioned that he saw one of the blog posts that I kind of snipped down and put on Instagram. And he loved the tone of it. He loved the way that uh, it was. It was one about tenants, about building a relationship between landlords and tenants, and that shown him that we care about that relationship, and that's why he got me round there. And we now manage his property. So that kind of that was clear evidence to me immediately. There, right? That article won me that business. 
I've got no doubt I wouldn't I would not have been in his living room if it wasn't for that article so then I started asking people more that when I'm meeting them are they, they seeing these articles is there anything they're liking and I was quite surprised how many people actually read them because I initially thought it was just content put out there it was just something I didn't have to worry about Jerry supplied it I plonked it up and everyone's happy I totally underestimated how many people were reading these and I think that's, that's the danger, Nick, isn't it, of content mar uh, marketing is the whole John Wanamaker quote that I know half my advertising is working, but I don't know which half is. And that's a wonderful benefit of content marketing because actually – you, you can be, you know, you, you can be putting it out there. And over time, just that assimilation of information and as that brand builds and as the trust in your brand builds, Abigail said before, so many estate agents are focused on just the here and now. You know, here comes the lead from Rightmove or one of the other portals, you know, and they fight over that where there's there, 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 there can be, there has been no trust built up between the, the agents. So you've got to put on a stellar show at the appraisal because frankly, that's all you've got. With content marketing, you've got a bit in the bank, haven't you? Yeah, d definitely. I think people are going to see see what you're about before you've even opened your mouth to them. And yeah. and already you're ahead of everyone else. When they know that you're a person and they know a bit of your personality and what you're about as a business, you're already 10 steps ahead the next guy or the next woman that comes in after you. And Abigail, cheers, Nick. And, and Abigail, does, does that resonate with you? Do you find yourself when your your team are turning up to appraisals when they're talking to people that they've already got a, a kind of latent sort of uh, understanding of what you as a business is about? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we do several things, not just using Jerry's content, but when someone um, does an instant vow with us, it goes into our nurture system, and they'll start being sent videos from team members. They'll get an e-guide, one of Jerry's e-guides, depending on their specific, like whichever audience they've fallen into. They'll get um, regular articles from us. So they'll they'll start to learn our voice and get an idea on who's in our team and what we're talking about on a weekly or monthly basis when it comes to property market information. So what, by the time we get out to that appointment, they'll be like, oh, you're, you're the guy from the video. I mean, we, we, we use... Um, obviously Facebook and Instagram quite heavily, but we also recently, I'd say, I don't know, three or four months ago, started doing a lot on TikTok. So some of yep. my team actually get recognized in the local area um, and get stopped, say, oh, you're the guy from TikTok, aren't you, with all the houses and stuff. So it, people people get to know you, don't they? And then they, they know it's part of that, you know, do they know, like, and trust you? Well, hopefully they know us. Secondly, I really hope they like us because we're all nice yep. people. And... I'm sure they trust us because we probably are the only trustworthy estate agents in our area, even though that should be a given in business generally. Yeah. Um, and I think also one of the first things that amazed me, I signed up with Jerry in lockdown last year and I started, I was personally loading up the articles and sending them out on a daily basis yeah. to our, 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 our database. And um, clients, existing managed clients would email me back and non-managed clients saying, oh my God, I'm loving the articles. One of them wrote to me the other day. She said, it's the only thing that's got me through my divorce, seeing your emails in my inbox every day. So people love the information. If they don't like it, they'll unsubscribe, won't they? And if they unsubscribe, then they're not my people. That's the definition of preference-based, you know, marketing and, and content, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So given that this all, again, again, famously, I see things simplistically, but... Um, Given that this just seems such an obvious no-brainer here, what do you still feel? Yeah. Why, why does why does some agents just not get involved from using content marketing? Is it literally they don't know the first steps to do it, or they're just not that kind of personality? Why would you not? Anybody? Um, don't you think as agents notoriously do what they've always done? It's it something is, different, yeah. Yeah. and the unknown's scary. People don't like yeah. change, and, and I guess some people don't know where to start. And hopefully most of the, my, my competitors stay in that realm. <laughs> yeah, but he, here's the great thing you know, about the competitors thing with the model that me and Chris Watkin have. It's the same model. We'll only, he only has one per town. We'll only have one postcode district we work out. Yeah. You need that exclusivity. If you are, are outsourcing, because we, yeah. we turn down now, I don't know, it's probably like 50-50 you know, like, because the area's gone. And we always say to him, we, we, we'll recommend Chris. We just say, like, have a chat with Chris because we can't help you. Um, but you need that postcode exclusivity or that area exclusivity. That's, like, the main thing 
you need for your estate agency if you're outsourcing. And I think one of the things that stopped agents from doing it is a bit like Abigail said there. There's some agents who are so slow to the party. They were so late to the party. Yeah. Um, and I think they are, if you're not doing content marketing now or it's not in your, your plans, then you're you're really late to the party. Because Nick was mentioning there, even by his own admission, you know, it, it took six months or a while there to get the ball rolling. It just can't, it just can't happen overnight, can it? Yeah. There's no, it's not a silver bullet. There's no marketing silver bullet. Oh, God. Mind you, when you're saying that, I did like the idea there that there's just an entire nation split down the middle of contenting driven by Jerry Lyons and Chris Watkins. There's got to be some sort. He loves a, he loves a pie, does Christopher Watkins. There's got to be a, 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 a pie chart that can show how you're doing against his agents. And that's, that's got to be the fight that everyone's looking for. <laughs> we, do, we do actually have quite a lot of the shared clients. Abigail's one. Oh. Oh, yeah, so oh. we do have some client. We got because because we're non-competing content styles. Um, but no, what what I would say is for agents that are not doing content, yeah, just and listen. This ain't a pitch for this is listen. This ain't just a pitch for us. Mm. They need to be doing content. There's Chris. There's Data Loft. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other people out there doing content. I think Chris and Data Loft because I see them as the two of the best ones apart yeah. from us. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's literally. But, okay, here's the thing. Let me just, and it's really unfair because it's, it's, it's a judge. How many, I'll ask each of you in turn. Let's ask you, Jerry, though, as, uh, uh, um, as, as the main fella. In terms of what percentage of ages do you think are doing content uh, marketing well at the moment? Um, well, I know that there's 120 definitely doing it well. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Um, it's getting a lot you know, better. You know, where I, you know where I said you should become vulnerable and open yourself up. You could you could try that at any moment. You know. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's not bragging if you could back it up. Muhammad Ali quote there. Boom. Um, yeah, of but no, like agents are getting better at it. And one thing I think as well, and I, I always try and guard against it, is, and this is not just content marketing companies, but other companies that are marketing to estate agents tend to say, or a lot of them sort of make estate agents feel bad. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Why are yeah. estate agents so rubbish at X, Y, Z? The, neg the negative self, the effective but negative Yeah, self. I don't get it. I don't get it. But um, I think it's getting a lot better. And like the likes of Abigail and Nick. And content marketing, like I said, is everything. That's why I mentioned Abigail's videos around Wembley Stadium. Nick's yeah. boards. These, these, that, that's, that's marketing. That's one of Nick's yeah. bottles. Yeah. And can I just say, can I just go on camera? If I'd have started drinking this eight years ago, I wouldn't be here today. I'd be at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> what the one, the ones that are due to start? <laughs> <laughs> See, would well, that pass? The, would that pass the Nan yeah. test, Nick? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. As I, said, there, I have, a very, one, it's very, I have a very different, a very different view. Abigail, your, uh, what do you think as a percentage agents that do content marketing well? Are we talking fifty percent, twenty five percent, ten percent? I was going to say 25%, but that might yeah. even be high. I don't know. Yeah, what about yourself, Nick? I think it's lower. I think it's lower. I think, like, good content yeah, marketing, yeah. I think it's about 10%. And okay. I think because lots of people, lots of agents are putting their marketing out there, is it good or is it the typical, we, we, we've got buyers waiting, no obligation valuation, you know, the little corny leaflets you get through your door. I think if you kind of take all that and just look at the good marketing, I'm a, in a town that's got 14,000 rooftops, there's yeah. 13 agents, and I can only name one other that I would say is putting out good stuff. Um, I, th I think it's about 10% that's I'd, putting I'd, out good stuff. I, I wouldn't be surprised, just to show I just agree with both you and Abigail at two different numbers, um, is that actually the problem we do is because we're all connected on, on social as well, is we tend to see what the best are doing all yeah. the time. Exactly. We're in a, in a little echo yeah. chamber. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're still not really aware that a load of agents get their, you know, get it from property industry or estate agency today is their kind of their news and everything else. So those those bubbles and how insular they can be is, is, yeah. is a real is a real challenge. Very good point. Look, I, I could talk for ages, but we, we all know that. Uh, let's just leave uh, Mr. Watkins as again, just jumped in again. Great thoughts on content from Jerry. He really knows his, uh, his onions. I think that was. Um, and, and, and to give respect to Chris, I always say this, Chris 
started off the movement for content marketing in the state agents. I see there's a lot of new people coming to the market now into the, 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 the mix. And some of them you'd think invented it. Yeah. But they didn't. Well, I, Someone who did it first was Chris. That's all on Chris, because I did tell him he should have formed a Ponzi scheme and taken 5% from each of those. But he didn't want to do that. So he famously, <laughs> he famously unlike me, never takes a, a clip. So uh, <laughs> that's it. Right. Let's just uh, summarise this. First and foremost, guys, thank you very much for your time. It's been fascinating listening how, you, how you're using it, hearing your experiences of, of Jerry and his fantastic hair and the content that he, he offers on a, a daily basis. But you've got more than that, haven't you, Jerry? You've been really kind for uh, for exclusive Kofoffel members. You're willing to just jump on a 20 kind of MOT, essentially, with, with agents and give them a brief overview of where they're going right, where they're going wrong. No, no obligation. <laughs> yeah, no obligation, but there is a caveat. The area has to be available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be, you'd so be I, couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't have a chat with somebody in Wembley because, like I said, my home girl Abigail's got that locked down. Do you know what I mean? She's got that wrapped up like a mummy. And Excellent. Nick Cheshire as well. Actually, Nick, no, I won't say that on air. I'll tell you afterwards. He knows. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I had a running with an agent in his town a while back. Well, look, the other thing is, everybody, if you're interested in that, go to the, you know where Jerry is on social, or, but go via the contact me button on, on the landing page, go to Agency Content Club on Kerfuffle there, and do, as I always say, don't just, you've heard it from the from the horse's mouth from, from Nick and Abigail here today, um, but we'll also go and see the reviews where a lot of people are going into a lot of detail about how Jerry is helping them out. And I know we get all embarrassed and shy about that, but you know, it, it, the important thing you said, Jerry, is just make sure you're doing it, isn't it? There's a, there's enough choice out there, but first and foremost, find out if your postcode is available and then, you know, learn a bit more from Jerry. And remember, there's one thing that I've got out of this. Ask yourself, would Nick's Nana approve? Would yes, the, the Nick's Nana test is now it's now a thing. It's, uh, it's Adam, so Adam did try manfully to get on, but uh, 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 but he, he wouldn't. But I'm sure he'd have just reiterated it and would have been here for another half hour. So in a way, <laughs> he's, he's helped us out there. Uh, Abigail, Nick, Jerry, fantastic hearing from you again. Thanks to everyone who's given their comments as well, and we'll all catch up soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Nick, Simon, thank you.